It all began during the end of World War II. Both the Russian and American armies captured German land and got hands on their weapons. Both countries entered into Cold War and started investing heavily in every possible way to top on each other. And then Soviet Russia launched Sputnik 1. It was the first time that anyone has launched a satellite into space in October 1957. This was the major blow to America and its space program as it was Russia who started the new era of space exploration. After launching Sputnik 1, Russians didn't just stop there. They launched first ever human, Yuri Gagarin, into space in April 1961, followed by first woman, Valentina Tereshkova, in 1963. It was the clear signs of defeat for Americans. And it was looking like Soviets are going to be the first one to send humans to moon. In fact, they already had their first spacewalk by Alexei Lenovo, in 1965. But something happened in between that gave Americans a slight chance. And oh boy, oh boy, that's when the tides turn the other way. After early success of Russia's space program, Americans were in rush to do something extraordinary, but ended up simply following what their Russian counterparts already did. The United States launched its first Earth satellite in January 1958 called the Explorer 1, after which NASA's Alan B. Shepard Jr. became the first American to fly into space just after a month from Yuri Gagarin's launch on May 1961. America was trying so hard to, to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Russia in space, but somehow Russia was always a step ahead. Everything was going in the favor of Russia, but a space disaster broke Russian moon dream. In 1967, the Russian cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov was killed when the parachute that was supposed to settle his Soyuz 1 capsule gently on the ground simply failed to open. Now it is time to take longer strides. Time for a great new American enterprise. Time for this nation to take a clearly leading role in space achievement, which in many ways may hold the key to our future on Earth. The US, which already had their space program accelerated under President Kennedy, saw the Russian space disaster as an opportunity. And finally, Apollo 11 was launched on July 1969 and Neil Armstrong became the first human to ever walk on the moon. As Americans defeated Russia in race to moon, there was no more interest left for Russians to land on the surface of the moon. So, they deviated their interest toward unmanned missions to the moon and Venus. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Even though the intensity of space race dropped significantly after Russian defeat, both countries experienced the need of permanent presence in space. Americans started working on NASA's Skylab program to send space workshops for orbital presence in 1973. Similarly, Russians started building their Mir space station between 1986 to 2001. As Soviet Russia got dissolved into Russian Federation in 1991, the rivalry between two nations turned into a friendly cooperation when they merged their separate space station plans into a single facility, integrating their modules and incorporating contributions from European Space Agency and Japan in 1993. This was the first development towards new era of International Space Station. The aftermath of the Cold War between Russia and America resulted into various positive outcomes with the mankind as the clear winner. Technology developed so much faster during Cold War like never seen before. And now, with the rise of China, we are on the brink of another cold war and hope that results in the same positive outcomes just like the cold war one for the rest of the world.
I hope you liked the video. If so, don't forget to smash that like button, share this video with your friends and family. And for more such exciting contents, just subscribe to the channel. With this, signing out for now. See you in the next one.